Uh, hello and uh, welcome to a quick take on uh, India's ban of, of Chinese apps. This is the fourth instance of uh, India banning Chinese apps, although it's not clear whether they have been banned or not been banned because there's no official statement. Uh, Sarvesh Mathi, uh, also of Media Nama, who's with me, had done the story. Uh, Sarvesh, uh, what's the story? Yeah, Nikhil. So uh, we started seeing reports like yesterday morning and uh, uh, there was a list of 54 apps circulating saying that uh, these have now been banned by the government for their uh, links to China. But uh, we did not see any uh, official uh, press release in PIB or uh, any, we did not get any confirmation when we contacted the IT ministry. So it's not official. The only uh, indication that we know that this has happened is because Google said that they have received a list from uh, the IT ministry and they have blocked certain apps. They didn't say uh, how many or which apps. Yeah, but they also said that uh, this is banned under Section 69A, right? Yeah, yeah. They said it. Uh, they said that the orders were issued under Section 69A. So here's what happened, right? A, uh, like a couple of days ago, I started getting messages on WhatsApp from people saying, hey, I've heard that India's banned more apps and um, some apps have been banned. And and I was like, I, I haven't heard anything about this yet. Um, and uh, then there were reports. I saw a tweet from ANI saying that uh, you know, Chinese apps have been banned in India and they had some apps listed. And on WhatsApp, a, uh, a list of uh, banned apps was circulating. Um, in fact, I got, we got a message from someone pointing out that one particular uh, sort of um, app had been banned differently as compared to other, but we'll get into that, that in a bit. So, what are the types of apps that have been banned? Uh, so, most of the apps, I think, are uh, remakes of the apps which were banned in 2020. But uh, the, just to give you an idea, there are like apps called Beauty Camera, Music Plus, Video Player, Cam Card, and uh, many such app locks. Uh, I think the notable name here is uh, Garena Free Fire, which is uh, one of the more popular battle royale games in India. So they have, they have about 70 million users globally and 40 million of that are from India. So uh, the whole chatter uh, over the weekend started because people uh, stopped seeing Garena Free Fire on uh, Play Store and uh, Apple App Store. So that's when the uh, circulation uh, that uh, we, uh, the government might have banned Chinese apps again. But it was not certain because uh, there was another reason that Garena Free Fire could have been uh, removed because of copyright issues with PUBG. So there was a lot of uncertainty, but that, that app stands out. So, you know, one of the things that I noticed from what you just said was that some of these apps were like named like music player and video player. And that's a trick that many app developers use because when someone goes on the Google Play Store, they essentially search for, let's say, video player or video recorder, video editor uh, or photo editor. So many apps actually you put that as their name. Um, so, so that's interesting. But the other thing is if it's a battle royale game, it's like PUBG, right? Yeah, it's very similar to PUBG. It's a PUBG competitor. Right. So uh, in fact, PUBG was in the first list of apps that had been banned. And I remember going to uh, a chemist once and the guy, you know, behind the counter was playing PUBG on his phone. And PUBG had been banned. So I asked him, what's like, uh, are you playing PUBG? And he said, yes. And so I was like, uh, have hasn't it been banned? And he just shrugged his shoulders and continued playing. So, you know, uh, apps may be banned, but people find, find workarounds. But the government, in whatever unofficial comment it has made to some publications, has, uh, has talked about that, there, that these are, there are workarounds, right? What, what sort of workarounds have we seen here? Uh, I lost you for a bit, Nikhil. Sorry, uh, what's I was talking about workarounds. So, what sort of workarounds have we seen? Oh, uh, in terms of these apps coming back on onto the app stores, right? So, I so PUBG is an interesting case because what PUBG did was uh, they found a legal way to come back by uh, changing their name, keeping the exact same game, but more importantly, changing their uh, ties with China. So, uh, Crafton published the game in India and they said that uh, all the communication will happen on uh, Indian servers run by Microsoft. So they removed the China connection. Uh, they said that the app will no longer communicate with China. And so uh, PUBG came back and that was the only notice, like notable name that has come back because the other big players, TikTok, WeChat, 
cam scanner are still not uh, back uh, like uh, like pubg so pubg's workaround is interesting the other the other way that people uh, apps have been coming around is by changing their name uh, keeping the exact same functionality and uh, maybe even changing the developer under whose name it's listed hmm. but it still has chinese kind but i'm very curious to know how so there's 54 apps which were banned uh, so one of the reports that uh, came out with this uh, this thing say, they said that uh, an official told them that most of these apps are rebranded versions yeah. and i'm curious to know how the government tracked down and found out that these are rebranded version is it easy to do that because there's just so many apps out there well the thing is that they've clearly taken their time right it's been a couple of years since the apps were banned um, and uh, of course there are also uh, the helpful folks who send them lists of apps in in the interest in national interest and uh, who would tell them that okay this is the one that's been rebranded with this then all they have to do is verify but you know this um, national interest is an interesting concept in this context uh, because when these apps were first banned it was in the interest of like they were banned because one i think the government cited privacy issues but also because they were saying that these apps are uh, transferring data to china uh, and also that in the interest of sovereignty and integrity of india which is a boilerplate statement uh, that seems to be used more often now um and the ban was under section 69a so a couple of things one when these apps were first banned there was a china versus india sort of a face off taking place between the armies um, at the what is called the line of actual control which is a, 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 a you know in a disputed area between india and china um, in fact there have been cha- issues about uh, the representation of india's map uh, in various global places where it shows some parts of india as parts of pakistan and parts of china and india's raised objections there so uh, when the, there were skirmishes i think people were killed um, and essentially what's what what happened was that india sometime in april uh, were essentially banned uh, first stopped investments from countries that are uh, that have a border with india saying that those will have to go through a government route and that basically gives the government the right to deny such an investment so many indian startups had challenges because they had funding coming in from chinese companies tencent and alibaba were two very significant investors in in, in indian startups in fact i remember zomato went and said that they started making ipo plans because they had this last tranche of money that had to come in uh, from a chinese investor which couldn't go through because of this particular ban and that's when they and eventually they raised funding but they because the plans had already begun they ended up going for an ipo but so uh, india was a us versus china kind of a battleground where uh, us companies and chinese us investors and companies and chinese investors and companies were both uh, trying to get stakes in indian companies because it's a really large market huge potential the second highest number of users in the world outside of china the lowest internet access rates uh, you know uh and the internet sector was growing rapidly so uh you know i think after that ban happened it became like a us only playground um we, but uh, but i think after that is when the chinese app ban happened and at that time it was difficult to contest it uh, because of the sort of uh, battle uh, because of the issue of the line of actual control um and the fact that chinese intelligence law actually allows china to uh, direct uh, com- chinese companies to take certain actions in uh, in national interest in the interest of china's sovereignty etc so i mean there was fear at that time and legitimate fear that uh, by being an authoritarian country china could have used these apps um, for launching something like a ddos attack against india so well this is all hypothetical but the risk in those situations still remains and if the same thing were to happen in india the company could have gone to court and battled it out because it, india is a democracy but china is not so you know just because we are an open market because uh, other companies can come and invest in india they can operate their apps and we access, they are accessible in india our openness shouldn't be a weakness was kind of the way i was thinking about it then and that we should have different rules for agreements or you know for participation in our economy from democracies 
versus authoritarian regimes because the rule of law exists uh, in democracies, uh, so to speak. So, but um, you know, uh, in anything else you want to add, surveys. Uh, in any yeah. So on- one mm-hmm. one of the observations that uh, I have is so when the government normally issues orders under Section sixty nine A, they have the right to keep it confidential. They don't have to reveal it to the public, and they prefer not to reveal it because uh, it does. Uh, damage them like their public image because it can be viewed as censorship uh, worldwide, right? Hmm. But the only two instances where I've seen them be open about it is when it comes to China. The in twenty twenty they were open about the bans then or the apps which were banned, why they were banned, and then more recently a couple of months back, uh, when the government ordered the takedown of certain YouTube channels run by uh, Pakistani operatives. So these are the only two instances where they've been open and. I don't know what to think of that because it seems to uh, signal that when they want the people to know that they're taking strong actions against uh, countries like China and Pakistan, they they open about it, but not in other instances. What do you think of that? So you know, I, I was just thinking about what this means for our rights, right? Effectively, if something is banned, uh, we have the right to know what's been banned. We have the right to know why it's been banned. But Section sixty nine A of the ITI, the rules for it essentially prevent. Uh, us as citizens from knowing. So there's a restriction uh, on someone else to disclose these orders and these bans, uh, but there is no restriction on the government. So they're then using uh, you know, this information for political means. And they're trying to say that you know, we are going against India's adversities and so, so to speak. So it's purely political action from the Indian government in terms of releasing this information. But Charvay, there's also a discrepancy, right? In, there have been four bans, I think you told me, but only two of them have been disclosed, and this one wasn't disclosed. So why? What? What's happening here? Why are they disclosures yeah. in some cases, and why none in other in 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 others? Yeah, actually, there is no. There, I don't have any idea why this is happening. It is weird because uh, in 2020, in June, the first time they banned, they released the public list. The second time in July, there was no public list. It was just few uh, reports. In September, they were they were again public. In, uh, in November, they were again public, but uh, this time around, they are not public. The, the, at least it's not been issued yet. So there doesn't seem to be a clear pattern on why they are public sometimes and why they're not. Uh, mm. One reason that I could think of in defense of the government is maybe the times they're not public, it's just apps that have been like rebranded versions of past apps. So they just felt the not, uh, no need for it to be public. Mm. But no, but no idea. I don't, I don't know. I don't think that the government has any defense over here because, uh, you know, if I'm unable to access something uh, that I should be able to otherwise, and the government has issued an order, which is censorship, uh, I should know why it's been censored and what all has been censored. Um, I don't see any reason where how transparency might hurt the government because it's used the same transparency for its own political means. So I, this doesn't right. make sense to me, to be honest. Yeah, but, I, but, if, yeah. If you ask me, there must be like an overall to Section sixty nine A where every content takedown order should be public. This actually was uh, also Section sixty nine A was challenged in the Supreme Court, and they said that there is due process being followed in sixty nine A where there's a review committee, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I don't know which review committee is going to overturn a ban on Chinese apps. To be honest, but yeah, uh, for, you know, I, I I wish that the Supreme Court in two thousand and seventeen. Uh, so 15, when it uh, came out with the Shreya single judgment and upheld 69A, I wish they had not done that and sort of inserted clauses for transparency and accountability for the government. That's a failure on our part as, as, as a democracy that we can't, uh, that, that we've avoided transparency on such actions. Um, but, you know, uh, how, how have people reacted to this ban? You said that there were some people complaining yeah. about not being able to access, but so I think a lot of people, the only big uh, issue in terms of public has been that they're not able to access Garena Free Fire. That's the biggest issue uh, in terms of the list of apps. Hmm. But uh, apart from that, there have just been a lot of other jokes on how this has now created the opportunity for uh, 54 Indian startups, 54 <laughs> Indian apps. And uh, I'm open to funding. I'm starting. Uh, this is my pitch. And then they just literally give copies of the yeah. So the so if you think about it, right, that's a billion dollar opportunity. If it t- t- TikTok had 120 million internet users before it got banned in the country, and immediately afterwards, you had what ShareChat launching Moj, uh, which is just recently sort of merged with 
MX Takatak from MX Player, which is a Times of India company. Um, then uh, uh, Daily Hunt launched uh, uh, launched uh, this thing called uh, uh, Josh, and uh, Chingari was another video a short video app with I think about thirty odd million users uh, that launched uh, separately. And Chingari actually is an interesting Web three company now because they've uh, launched a token called the Gari token. So do look that up. Um, some interesting stuff happening in the video space. Um, so, you know, there is this sense around Atma Nirbharta in India and that India is going to be like um, Indian startups are getting a fill up. But really, if, you, if your way of giving your startup ecosystem a fill up is by banning uh, global players, uh, or uh, apps from operating in the country and un, uh, or making life difficult for them. And we've seen like in case of some of the US tech firms um, and also payment companies like MasterCard, um, the regulations that made life very tough for them over the last few years. Um, you know, I don't think that's really a way of giving a fillip to your startup ecosystem. Um, yeah, how, how are you any different from China if that's the approach you want to take? Yeah, and that's the thing, right? This is what China does. Uh, China went after US tech firms many years ago. Um, I remember Google leaving China. Um, and then uh, they've had regulations that have made uh, it impossible for, for, for uh, you know, companies uh, from uh, democratic nations really to operate there because of the kind of control that the Chinese government has on these apps. And remember the last couple of years, they've also gone after their own tech founders. So, uh, if India is going the China way, I guess Indian founders should also be careful and conscious of, of you know, right now they might be celebrating opportunities created for them, oh. but uh, things could, I mean, uh, they could be next. Um, you know, but also if you look at the IT rules that came out last year, uh, they uh, specifically kind of were a step in the direction of what China does, which is uh, using intermediaries and entities to control content and speech. Uh, offline. So I, I, uh, I can see India's heading kind of in the China direction. We're not as regressive as China yet, but we, see, we can see from the pushbacks, from the regulations and from data protection and, 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 and localization, there is a particular direction that's being set. Um, and it's kind of worrying. Uh, I should be worrying for people that, uh, you know, uh, these, uh, there is more government control over the internet. Um, through data localization, censorship, regulatory structures and bans. And I think we'll have more to come. Uh, not going to be any, uh, an easy next couple of years if you're in the internet business in India. Yeah, and I'm, I'm uh, wondering how this is going to affect consumer, consumer interest because uh, take, for example, the new RBI card mandate. Yeah. And many, we, we still have many international uh, companies that are yet to comply with it. And uh, a report from yesterday said that many have decided not to comply with it and not to serve Indian customers. Yeah, so these I, are I mean, I, I can give an example, needs. actually. I can give an example, Heroku, which is a Salesforce exactly. company, uh, a couple of months, I think a month or so ago tweeted, uh, someone had tweeted that Heroku was not accepting Indian credit cards. So, you know, I, I'm worried that we might, what we're left with essentially is going to be an Indian internet. And for you know, for you and me who have grown up with the internet, with access to a global suite of applications and services uh, for work and for enjoyment, you know, uh, this is going to be like if all we're left with is Indian uh, entities and, and and no no discredit to Indian startups and founders, but they also use many global services. So with localization bans restrictions, I'm there might be cloud. Uh, reg regulations in the future, we'll essentially be, uh, we might lose out as consumers in terms of accessing the next new thing that comes up globally. I, I mean, um, if these regulations yeah. existed, then maybe... And global no players will be losing out on access to Indian customers. There's two, the two people who will be losing out from such regulations, right? Yeah, and, and this is a great market to basically test a product. Uh, if you remember, YouTube launched YouTube Go in, in India next billion users initiative from Google was focused entirely on India because they were trying to develop apps in this country and see if they're portable globally and how they would work. Um, so look, essentially, uh, if India should be a part of the global internet. I don't think we should be 
uh, this should like chinese apps aside i think we should be careful about how we uh, about how our policies impact our participation in the global internet so do you think we need to uh, have separate policies for countries like china and then uh, another policy for countries that have a democratic process and perhaps for perhaps example, like us that's the, that's the split that's going to happen right i mean that that's still a split that one can argue about because uh, where there is a democracy where there is uh, where there is uh, for potential for a democratic debate um, perhaps the rules should be different for those countries where you have a relationship with but we are seeing the balkanization of the internet take place bit by bit there is for example the the privacy shield which separates the us uh, from the eu uh, because of the us surveillance uh, mechanisms so i don't know i think we're going to see more balkanization taking place more bans some will be direct bans like we're seeing right now some will be uh, in in terms of creating an environment where other uh, play, where many players will not choose to participate many players may not choose to participate in the eu ecosystem because of you know they might feel that the things like the gdpr and and the digital services act uh, go against the way they would like to operate uh, let's see i think this is still uh, a story that's being written uh, but thanks yeah. for your time sir this was fun thanks nikhil